All right, hello, Algebra 2 students. This is Mr. Fleming coming to you with another lecture. So this week, we're going to be learning about adding and subtracting rationals. Remember that rationals meaning anything with a fraction. And also, um, on Google Classroom, I have posted like a, a, a notes template for this lesson. So you want to make sure you have that ready to go um, as you um, listen to this video. And again, make sure to pause and rewind if you want to double check something. All right, so before we get started, I wanted to review multiplication and division, which is what we covered last week. So when you're multiplying or dividing rationals, it's relatively simple because all you're essentially doing, multiply the, the, you know, ah, multiply the numerator, multiply the denominator. So it's not too bad. So for this example, when you have a fraction equal to a fraction, we know that we can just cross multiply, which is great. So basically we're multiplying by the, the denominator on both sides and multiplying by the denominator on both sides. So we're left with six times X minus three equals X squared. So then we just distribute to get six X minus 18 equals X squared. Remember that if we have a polynomial like this, we want to move all of this to the other side so that we can get kind of like a polynomial. So we're left with zero equals X squared minus six X plus 18. We can go ahead and factor this. Zero equals X minus three. X, uh, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, X minus three, X minus six, there we go. And then um, we know that our answer is going to be X equal three and X equals six, but wait. So we learned also last week that sometimes you can have extraneous solutions. So you have to go back and check the original question to see if it's gonna work. So I'm looking over here and I see that I have an X minus three in the denominator here. And one of my answers is X equals three. That's not going to work because 3 minus 3 is 0. We cannot divide by 0. So we know that this one is extraneous. And that our answer is x equals 6 because that'll work out. Great. So let's move on to the second example from last week. This is division. So when you're dividing here, we're just simplifying this instead of, um, uh, well, yeah. Sorry about this. No, we're actually making this equal to four thirds. So when you're dividing a fraction like this, you need to make sure to, you know, flip the flip this and then change it to multiplication, right? Multiply by the reciprocal. The same applies. So you have two, three X times X cubed over eight equals four thirds. Just multiply numerator, multiply the denominator, so 2x cubed equals 24x equals 4 thirds. We'll simplify this so we can divide both um, by 2. And I notice that there's an x cubed and x, so that'll simplify to x squared, 1, 12. So we're left with x squared over 12 equals 4 thirds multiplied by 12 on both sides. X squared equals 16, square root both sides. Then you're left with X equals plus or minus four. Okay, so that's a quick review of multiplying, sorry, multiplying and dividing rationals. So when you're adding and subtracting, remember we're gonna always keep the denominator the same and add or subtract the numerator. So we're gonna do some examples with just numbers, and then we're gonna add the variables in so we can see how it works within, within our variable world. So the first example we have on your paper should be 3 fourths plus 2 fourths, right? When you're adding these together, we know that we're gonna keep four the same, add the three and the two, so this is gonna be 5 fourths. If we do this with an x, we just watch what happens. So we have three over four X plus two over four X. Don't get tripped out by the X. The same rules still apply. So keep the denominator the same, which is four X, and then 
add the numerators. Not too bad. Okay, so let's go on to this next part. We have two thirds plus five ninths, all right? So when we have, when we're adding fractions like this, the problem is the denominators aren't the same. So we need to make the denominators the same. So that's something that, you know, we've, we've learned before. So to do that, I usually find like, what is, you know, the least common denominator. That's the, that's the famous thing. So I know that, you know, in this case, the least common denominator is probably nine, because um, I know three that goes into nine. And to get to nine, I can multiply this by um, three. So I'll do that, multiply by three over three, and to change this fraction to over nine. So I'm gonna get six over nine plus five over nine. And I'm gonna, that's gonna equal 11 ninths, right? The same thing is going to apply for variables. So we'll have six over three X. Oh, sorry. Two over three X plus five over nine X. All right. So I know the least common denominator in this case is nine X. Cause I know that if I multiply this side by three over three, I can get the same denominator. I'm always multiplying by the same number over the same number because I can do that. You can always multiply by one. So times three over three, we're gonna get six plus six over nine X plus five over nine X. That's 11 over nine X, not too bad. Okay, so moving on to the next one. We're gonna have one, the number one plus, sorry, move my paper a little bit, one over four over five, okay? So again, we're gonna change this one so it has a denominator of five. Well, the way to do that is I can write one as simply five over five, right? Because five over five, five divided by five is just one. We can do that. So then you just add these together. Five plus four is going to be nine over five. Not too bad, right? So let's try with a fraction now. So we're gonna have one, sorry, let me make it a little clearer. One plus four over five X, right? So I can change this one to five X over five X plus four over five X, just like that. Now here is where it's gonna get interesting. You're gonna keep the denominator the same, which is so it's gonna be over five X, but we can't simplify this anymore. So we're gonna leave it as that binomial, which just means it has two terms, five X plus four. And that's the simplified answer, all right? So leave it as that binomial and keep the denominator the same. So if you can add and subtract fractions, you can add and subtract fractions or rationals using variables, okay. So we are uh, moving on a little bit to some other examples. It's gonna get interesting from now on. Okay, so the, other, the next example I have is five eighths minus three over eight X. Okay, so, oops, sorry. So what I notice is that the you know, I want to make the denominators the same first. So um, I noticed that it, I, I can probably multiply this fraction by X to get an eight X in the denominator. So that's the LCD is going to be eight X. So it's missing here is just the X. So I'm going to multiply by X over X. And when I do that, I'm going to find that I'm gonna get 5x over 8x minus three over 8x. And from now, I can keep the denominators the same and then subtract the numerator. So my answer is going to be 5x minus three over 8x. Remember, just leave it as that binomial. Bam, not too bad. 
Okay, and so moving on to the next one is going to be 2 over 4x plus 12 and plus 7 over x plus 3. Okay, so for this one and for all things moving forward, your first step should be to look if you can factor anything. All right, so I notice that in this bottom denominator down here, I can factor that using GCF. I know that, um, you know, 4 and 12, I can take a 4 out and of both of those terms. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and that might help me find my least common denominator. So I'm going to do 2. I'll factor out a 4 and be left with x plus 3 plus 7 over x plus 3. Right on. So I know that there's an x plus 3 here, there's an x plus 3 here. That means if I multiply this term by 4, 4 over 4, I'm going to get that same denominator, which is awesome. So 2, my LCD is 4 times x plus 3. So I'm going to multiply this by 4 over 4 and be good to go. So 2, 4 over x plus 3, plus 7 times 4 is 28 over 4 x plus 3. Now that the denominator is the same, I can just, you know, leave the denominator the same and then add the numerators. So we have 2 plus 28 is 30. I'll write it over here. 30 over 4x plus 3. So you want to make sure you simplify. So I'm noticing here that I have a 30 and a 4. I can, those can both go into 2. So um, if I divide 2, I'll be like, that'll be 15, and that'll be 2. So 15, 2 times x plus 3 is our answer. Okay? So your knowledge of fractions is really going to help here. It all comes back, right? Okay. So our next one, we're going to continue getting a little more interesting as we move on. So our next one is 7 over x plus 2 minus 4 over x minus 5. Okay? So here is where we are. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, I can't factor it. Can't factor it. And if I, then if I look at the, um, the denominators, I notice they really have nothing in common. So that means the least common denominator is just going to be what's multiplied by each other. So the LCD here is going to be x plus 2 times x minus 5. And that's the way to get them uh, to have the same denominator. So I'll multiply this side by something that's missing. So it's missing x minus 5. So I'll do x minus 5 over x minus 5. Sorry, I'm kind of running out of space there. And then on this side, I'm going to do x plus 2 over x plus 2. All right. So keep them, remember to keep them in those parentheses. It's going to help you out a little bit. Okay, so then I'm going to multiply the top. So we're left with 7 times x minus 5 over x minus 5 x plus 2 minus, this is, be careful here, remember the minus, 4, x plus 2, and then x minus 5 over x plus 2. Great. So we notice we have there the same denominator now, so we can go ahead and combine uh, the, the numerator. So when I combine the numerator, what I'm going to get is 7 times x minus 5 minus 4 x plus 2. All right, so notice how this minus is going to carry it to all of that. Over x minus 5, x plus 2. Great, now we're down to one fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So this is, you're using really all of your algebra skills here, which is kind of fun. 
So we'll have 7x minus 35 minus 4x minus 8 and over the same x minus 5, x plus 2. And, you know, if you combine like terms and you combine the numbers, your final answer should be 3x minus 43 and then x plus 2 over x minus 5. So, pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool at least. So, the next thing we're going to do is we have to go ahead and the next step is to now add an equal sign because we were just kind of simplifying these expressions and now we're going to work about solving. Okay, so moving on. One second. All right. So now we're going to add an equal sign to the equation, and that's going to complicate things a little bit. So, again, as always, feel free to pause and take a moment to reflect or to write some notes. You know, go at your own pace. So, when we add an equal sign to everything, our first one is going to be 3x squared equals x minus 4 over 3x squared plus 2 over 3x squared. Great. So remember our first step whenever we're doing something like this is to factor. But I don't see anything that I can factor. Um, second step is to find the LCD. So make sure we can combine um, the denominators. So I'm like looking at this and like, oh, we have a 3x squared, 3x squared, great. We can go ahead and combine these numerators. I'm going to leave this one on this side as, as it is, and we'll see why in a second. So we have 3 over x squared equals x minus 4 plus 2 over 3x squared. Great. So simplifying that, I'm going to get 3 over x squared equals x minus 2 over 3x squared. Now, looking at this, this looks familiar. We can just go ahead and cross multiply, right? We have a fraction equals a fraction. Go ahead and cross multiply. So I'll have 3 times 3x squared. And then I'll have equals x squared times x minus 2. So here's where those uh, multiplying exponents really kind of help you out. Feel free to use the box if you need to. So 3 times 3x squared is going to be 9x squared equals x squared times x is x cubed minus 2x squared. So we'll go ahead and I will uh, subtract 9x on both sides because remember with the polynomial try to make it equal to 0. Beautiful. So we're left with 0 equals x cubed minus 11x squared. I'm like okay how in the world am I going to factor that? GCF. I noticed they share an x squared, so I'll do 0 equals x squared times x minus 11. Perfect. So that's fully factored. I can go ahead and solve that using zero, pro zero product property. Well, you know, that's going to be x equals 0, right? And then here it's going to be x equals 11. Okay, this looks good, but remember, we always have to go back and check our answer, especially when there's an equal sign. So I'm looking up here, and that x equals 0 is just not going to fly because I'm going to end up dividing by uh, 0 at the denominator. So no way. 11 probably will work fine. So the x equals 0, this is extraneous. And then... Um, x equals 11 is our answer. All right. So this is pretty cool. It's a pretty long process, but you know, once you get used to it, it's not so bad. So we're going to go to our last um, problem of the day. Thank you for making this far. So we'll have 1 over x plus 5 minus 1 over x squared plus 5x equals 4x squared plus 5x. All right, so remember, first step, factor. I'm seeing that at the bottom, I can go ahead and factor that. 
with using GCF. Um, so I'm just gonna go factor everything because that's gonna help. So we'll have one x plus five equal, oops, sorry, one x plus five minus one, I'm gonna factor out an x here, x plus five equals four over x times x plus five. Nice, okay? So I notice now that I can have a, an LCD, a least common denominator, that's gonna be x times x plus five. Because if I just multiply this guy by x, we're gonna have the same denominator, which is great. So x, x plus five. All right, so I'm just gonna multiply this guy, this term, by x over x. Because remember, you can always do that, multiply by one, essentially, to make the denominators the same. So I'm left with x over x times x plus five, oh God, minus one x times x plus five equals four x times x plus five. Right on. So we can go ahead and keep the denominators the same and subtract the numerators. So we're left with x minus one x times plus five equals four. Beautiful, so I notice I have the same denominator on both sides. So when I go and try to like, you know, cancel out the denominators, this is gonna happen. So I'll multiply this side by x times x plus five. I'll multiply the other side by x times x plus five. And oh, that's the same, cancel out. Cancel out, you're left with x minus 1 equals 4. Add 1 on both sides, x equals 5. Bam. So then I have this answer. I'm going to go look back at my original problem. And if I, if I put in 5 for here, I'm not going to get any denominators that are 0. So there you have it. Adding and subtracting rational functions. It's a long journey, but with some practice, you'll be able to do it. Thank you so much and good luck with Delta Math.